Okay, so uh, the basic, uh, the first thing that you do uh, on the uh, clean installation of your Windows, you must uh, install Git. Git will be used uh, not only to uh, download, uh, to work on our projects on Windows, but also to uh, download some additional uh, plugins for, for example, uh, PowerShell, so that it will make it uh, much nicer looking and easier to work with. So let's just skip this installation part. And when we have uh, our uh, Git client installed, we can proceed to installing the Windows subsystem for Linux. And that is the uh, Microsoft's uh, response to a need that people were actually uh, wanted from a uh, from very long time. And that's, uh, uh, window, uh, that's uh, Linux functionality uh, inside the win Windows uh, system. So what they've done, uh, they've made a, a Linux kernel that it's being uh, virtualized on their uh, Hyper-V uh, hypervisor. And that way you can have the uh, Linux, uh, a part of Linux system uh, in your Windows without having to actually do anything like multi-boot or something like that. It, it's uh, almost instantly uh, launching. So every time you need uh, Linux commands uh, or something like that, you just uh, enter your terminal and then you have it. Uh, so we'll be installing the version two. Uh, there are some uh, significant uh, differences between the two. So uh, first one is that for WSL2, you need a specific version of Windows. That is, uh, you do not actually need to have the uh, version Pro or something like that. It should be, be working uh, with all the distributions of Windows. But uh, as you can see, you need at least version uh, 19903 or something like that. So I believe uh, if you're up, updating your system, uh, like uh, if you're if you're actually updating your system, then you should be uh, should be should be good to go. Uh, and yeah, so also to make the WSL two work, we need to enable some uh, Windows features uh, that are uh, uh, there are that are listed in in this uh, manual for installing the. WSL. Uh, so uh, first of all, we need to actually, uh, uh, let's just stop here. So first of all, we need to actually enable the feature that's called the uh, Microsoft Windows Subsystem Linux. Then we need to uh, enable the virtual machine platform. And that's the, uh, the so to speak, uh, little version of the Hyper-V. So uh, as maybe you know Hyper-V is only uh, available on the Pro version of Windows, but this virtual machine platform that is also leveraging some features of the Hyper-V is available to uh, everyone. So uh, that's that's how we, we can uh, install the WSL tool. Um, so yeah, after that, you should be able to uh, execute the command WSL. So as you can see, when you type in list, uh, it says that there are no uh, installed distributions. So uh, what you can do is actually you search for distribution on the Microsoft store, and then you just download it. And it will uh, download it, and it will be installed on your, on your system. So let's also maybe skip that. Uh, so when it's uh, when it's complete, uh, what you need to do is actually you will need to uh, run it. So you'll be uh, you will have the uh, WSL icon. So uh, you'll just click on it, and the first boot will uh, install the distribution that you've chosen, and you will need to uh, create a new user for this. Uh, Linux subsystem. So uh, there will be a prompt 
that will ask you for yeah for for making a new uh, uh, user okay so now we go to uh i believe if you're using microsoft uh, product the, the windows system uh you should be familiar with a packet manager called chocolate lee so it's a uh, uh something that's actually been uh, the idea of been borrowed from the uh, linux systems that uh, every distribution has its own packet manager uh, that you use to install all the programs uh, and as for me using chocolately was not the mm, the optimal way of working as i didn't actually feel uh, comfortable using that as it's a third party software that has the uh, at, well too much privileges uh, enabled so actually it can be dangerous also the packages that are uh, uploaded on the chocolately may be i don't know uh, if they are not the official releases they can be dangerous but uh, yeah it's not like i'm uh, dissing the chocolately i think it's a great software but actually microsoft also have their own project that's called the windows package uh, manager it's uh, it's available uh, on the github uh, so to install that you just uh, grab the uh, bundle and and uh, yeah and proceed with 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 the installation uh, this will uh, provide us with a new command uh, that will be called win get so everything that we are going to do uh, installing the packages searching for them we'll be doing from the PowerShell, uh, and that means we'll be using the win get. Oh yeah, and of course you can also uh, grab this from the Microsoft Store. It's called App Manage App Installer. Uh, so yeah, uh, it will it will make make it much easier to uh, install new stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, we can search for things and we can install those packages so um, we'll be now installing the terminal terminal is a so to speak um, overlay for all your uh, terminals so if for example you have uh, powershell uh, cmd or uh, git bash or even a wsl terminal you can uh work with them uh from terminal this windows uh, windows uh, terminal uh, and it also make uh all of them look nice so you'll just uh, you'll see that in a moment how it looks yeah so that's the powershell uh in the in the terminal so what's what's also nice about the terminal is that you can use tabs so you can have multiple uh, terminals opened uh, simultaneously and you can just switch back and forth with them so yeah uh, next up will be installing the visual studio code so as you can see when i searched the, for visual studio code i had multiple uh, instances of the visual studio code but i've chose the user installer it's uh, you install the a particular package by just uh, typing in the whole name and uh, winget will get all this uh, correct so yeah that's that's how easy it is uh, to install uh, packages programs applications using the uh, win winget so uh, as we are now in the visual studio code uh, i'm also installing the uh extensions that we will need for further work so uh first we are installing the python extension then we'll be installing the uh remote extensions uh, and those remote extensions uh, in visual studio code uh, are used to uh, actually work inside for example a wsl or even the containers so as uh we will move forward i will try to actually show you how those uh, plugins can 
uh, be used and how they are helpful. So, okay. Uh, let's see what's what's next. Um, yeah, so uh, now I'm looking for Docker for Windows. So that's the next next uh, next thing to, that we need to do is to install the Docker. Uh, for Windows, we have the uh, installer that will uh, that will handle all the installation. Uh, so uh, also, I wanted to uh, mention that you can use actually the WinGet to uh, to install Docker. So, but I wanted to show you that uh, WinGet is uh, actually having this the, the newest version uh, available. So it's it's not like it's behind or something like that. You can you can be quite confident with the official releases that they are up to date uh, on on this uh, using this tool. So uh, yeah, I'll be now downloading the Docker. Uh, installer then we will proceed to the installation as you can see there's a quite nice uh, installation script uh, used by this winget tool uh, it shows you exactly what's going on and after after the installation part we should be uh, we should be good to go with the docker So as now the uh, it, it states the installation succeeded, we can check out the uh, the Docker. Okay, and here is the uh, like first uh, first problem that you may encounter when installing uh, Docker. Uh, it's it says that your user is not. Uh, in the Docker users group. So that's because that I'm not using um, the administrator uh, user on my Windows machines. As, as you won't actually work on your sudo account all the time, I do the same on the Windows. So uh, I'll need to actually add myself to the Docker users group manually. Of course, you can, uh, you can Oh, uh, you can make a, a like a well. Um, uh, you can make the Docker work by just uh, uh, running it as the administrator. But uh, yeah, I will just in a second show you how to actually uh, uh, add yourself uh, properly to the uh, Docker uh, users group. And here you can see that uh, it also there is another problem. Uh, it says that uh, the the WSL Linux kernel uh, is uh, well somehow uh, not in not complete, uh, and so there's uh, there's an action that you need to take. Uh, I believe that's because uh, maybe I did not actually restart my uh, my computer. But yeah, there is a link to uh, to the article that you uh, that when you. Uh, Enter. There is a explanation what you should do. So uh, actually, there is a link to the uh, kernel update, uh, and you just install that, and uh, and the Docker will will actually work. Uh, yeah. So now it's, it's prompt prompts me for. Uh, administrator uh, password and now uh, it will it will start so uh, actually as you can see uh, the docker is using the wsl2 as a backend so uh, back in the days uh, there was a, there was a problem with docker as uh, it was actually using the hyper v for uh, setting up all the uh, all the virtualization and stuff so uh, you uh, so it was kind of a uh, uh, slow, and uh, it wasn't that uh, neatly uh, um, connected with all the uh, with with the whole uh, Windows system. So now they they decided to go uh, with the WSL two as a backend, as it's actually the uh, Linux, 
and it has its own kernel, so it can leverage uh, that to actually uh, run the Docker inside this uh, Linux distribution that you have. So, uh, yeah. So that's the, the only for demonstrating that you can actually uh, start the Docker. And just a second, I will. Uh, oh yeah, that's that's the uh, how to enable Kubernetes. But yeah, uh, what's 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 actually uh, will happen when you uh, start Docker, not as uh, the user that you should be. Uh, you will get the error message in, for example, uh, Visual Studio Code that the user you're using does not have actually. Well, it states that it cannot find the uh, the socket, so to speak. So it cannot uh, connect to the Docker, and that's because, of course, you're using your uh, account, uh, your Windows account, to uh, run the Visual Studio Code, and then you're using the Docker uh, with your, uh, so to speak, sudo accounts, uh, the other account that's the uh, administrator account. So uh, again, you can. You will see here, uh, just a second. Yep. Uh, let me find this. Uh, OK, yeah. So here you can see uh, on the documentation uh, from provided by the Microsoft, uh, there's actually a way how to uh, add yourself to uh, to the Docker users group. So you can use the net local group Docker users and then the, your uh, domain that you're a member of and the username. If you're uh, not in any domain as I was, uh, then you just omit this part and you just uh, change this to your username. Username can be, uh, you know, I believe you know where to find your username. So uh, you just replace the username with your username. And then uh, you will have the access to the Docker uh, on uh, from your uh, from your account. So after that, uh, you will need to uh, log out and then uh, re-log in because uh, if you uh, because uh, if you won't do that, then Docker will still not uh, acknowledge that you're in this. In this group, so uh, that's that's what you need to do. Uh, yeah, so I added myself, and and then I needed to uh, re-log in, as you can see, because uh, this this message, right? It also states that you need to actually uh, uh, log out. So yeah, so going further to the next part. Uh, we'll be actually enabling the uh, Kubernetes that is built in uh, into the Docker. So it's a kind of nice feature uh, of Docker for Windows uh, that you do not have to uh, install any third-party clusters or something like that. Of course, you can uh, by now use, for example, Kubernetes in Docker uh, in, in the, the the abbreviation is uh, kind, so. Uh, but I believe it's if you're just using uh, Kubernetes for development uh, applications and not for, for example, actually mm, making any mm, more specific uh, like uh, cluster uh, customization, then uh, this is just enough. Uh, I mean, it's a uh, Fully functional Kubernetes cluster. It's be, being uh, it's it's running inside the container, and so uh, it's kind of lightweight, and uh, it will be sufficient for for you guys to just uh, if you just want to uh, develop stuff and then, for example, run it in the in the uh, cluster. Then yeah, it will be it will be enough. Uh, Another thing about uh, this uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster that's built that's built in, in into the Docker for for Windows, Docker desk, desktop is uh, that it shares the uh, it's it shares the uh, uh, registry. So uh, everything that you push 
to your local registry is automatically available uh, inside your uh, Kubernetes cluster. So it's 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 a very nice feature because uh, in the case of other uh, clusters like Minikube or uh, or Kind or or any any other, you either have to uh, you either have to have uh, some kind of registry set up uh, in uh, like in front, so it's 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 sometimes uh, an external registry or uh, it's uh, like uh, built in, but it's not always that that, that nice. Uh, and yeah, I I believe that's that's uh, that's better that 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 is the easiest way to start with with uh, with Kubernetes on on. Uh, on your machine so uh, yeah and now uh, what what is going on is that I'm uh, uh, installing the hack uh, font that uh, is a very nice font to uh, be used inside your for example Visual Studio Code or the or the terminal but not much for the terminal but I, I will show you uh, why uh, this installer is not the best uh, solution for for example your uh, terminal so uh, but it but i wanted to just uh, uh, show you that you have this uh, quite uh, nice installer that will install the font for you uh, so yeah it's just a matter of downloading this and voila you have the the hack font uh, installed in your uh, in your system so uh, what uh, what you can do inside the the terminal you can actually uh, edit the settings uh, and set the uh, font that you'll be using uh, either in uh, each uh, shell. So you can have the separate settings for each shell, or you can have a, like a default setting. So uh, that will be applied to all the uh, all the terminals that you're uh, using uh, within the terminal. So uh, yeah, but I will show you what's wrong with this uh, with this hack. It's not that. It's just uh, uh, yeah, just a second. Uh, problem is with with this that uh, when you're uh, when you're, for example, using a PowerShell uh, power line uh, that has uh, some Unicode. Uh, mm, characters uh, that version of hack font will not actually work so uh, now we will proceed to installing the posh git that is the extension for powershell that will provide us with the uh, uh, nice information about the uh, github repository that we are currently uh, inside so if for example you enter the uh, if you enter the directory that has the uh, Git uh, repository initialized in it, then you will have uh, a nice information in 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 line uh, with your with your command line. So uh, uh, to install that, what we need to actually do is to uh, have the PowerShell gallery installed. That is the uh, PowerShell module that you use to install the another modules for the PowerShell. So this is kind of a inception, but yeah, uh, sometimes you need to, uh, yeah. So uh, here I had a problem with uh, uh, with uh, installing the uh, PowerShell gallery actually. Uh, and just a second, yeah, because. I tried to uh, install it uh, using the provided commands, and that did not actually uh, restrict the scope to the current user. And I wanted only to install this uh, for for myself for my user. So, yeah, uh, you need to add the scope. Uh, and in my case, it's a current user. Uh, here, it's a uh, it's a warning about that uh, the, the the packet management module this uh, new uh, powershell get can uh, somehow override the existing commands uh, but uh, that's actually what we uh, may want or not 
depends on uh, how you want to use that but uh, yeah uh, so uh, just a second yeah so uh, I had to actually use the the command that was uh, provided by the documentation that uh, states that when something is wrong with with the with the allow pre-release parameter, then you have to allow this uh, cobbler. Uh, but then again, still uh, it did not recognize, and that's the uh, kind of a mm, usual problem when you forget, for example, to restart the terminal. Uh, it's uh, it's quite common that when you uh, just open up a new PowerShell terminal, it will all work. So uh, as in this uh, situation, I had problem because uh, I had to actually restart or start a new new uh, new shell. So after that, it actually worked. So it will, of course, uh, ask you if you uh, trust the publisher of this uh, module. Uh, uh, here also, uh, there was a problem. You, uh, I don't know why it did not load the PowerShell get module, but yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and this is uh, another uh, interesting problem. Uh, so PowerShell has uh, several uh, like uh, uh, permissions for uh, running external. Uh, PowerShell scripts. So it's called the execution policies. So those policies are being set uh, for uh, like for um, several scopes. So uh, here you can see that you can uh, list all the execution policies with their scope. And for for me, it, it was the current user that I uh, needed to change because uh, it was undefined and that prevented uh, my PowerShell from actually uh, running the external uh, scripts. So uh, to be more safe, to be safer, you, you should be using at least the remote signed um, policy because unrestricted is dangerous because then uh, there's no like, yeah then then every every uh, script can be actually uh, run so uh, after that you can see there is no more errors i can uh, again try to install my posh git extension or module to be more precise and yes after that uh, i was uh, i was able to install it and so now be, uh, we'll be uh, proceeding to install all my posh. So uh, again, if you are uh, familiar with the uh, ZSH or Linux uh, or Bosch, uh, you may know that there's a popular uh, extension for, for, the, uh, for the ZSH, that is the uh, shell uh, for Linux, uh, that is called all my ZSH. And all my posh is a uh, a similar thing, but used uh, by the PowerShell. So again, uh, I'll be installing that to just make it look better as it provides the themes. And you will see in a moment, uh, how can you enable uh, some nice looking themes in your, in your PowerShell. Okay, so uh, as you see, there's the command now, uh, and it will, yeah, present us with uh, available uh, available themes. I'll choose the paradox one as it for me looks the, the best, and uh, you do that by editing your uh, profile file. So it's under the variable profile. So what you have to do is actually just to run the Notepad and provide it with this uh, parameter and it will, in my case, I did not have this uh, file yet. So uh, 
it was uh, created and now i just need to uh, set up the theme by uh, providing this line uh, with the correct theme name so in my case it will be the paradox and I just do that by replacing this uh, parameter now you can see that it's uh, looking better uh, and now uh, I believe I will show how to actually uh, how it looks in the uh, when it's being used with oh yeah and of course to uh, enable the uh, posh kit that that is the power line uh, extensions so to speak that will show you the information about the repository you have to add that to your uh, profile file also so here now i am uh, creating a new uh, folder for a project and i initialize the repo as you can see uh, there's a uh, there's some kind of uh, new stuff going on in the uh, in my terminal as but still it cannot recognize the characters. So this is why I do not actually recommend installing the hack font from this installer. I will show you in a second, uh, yeah, how to handle it. And of course, uh, if you're using the uh, terminal inside your uh, Visual Studio code, you must also uh, provide a setting for, uh, for fonts. So that can be edited by the uh, yeah by the settings.json that can be used to customize all the settings in your uh, Visual Studio Code. And yeah, and that will be the font and family. And here I chose the hack because I do not have the uh, for now, uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't actually recognize the hack font, uh, but uh, you must believe me that eventually it did. So uh, let's just, yeah. So now you can see that actually it did, but still this uh, this font, uh, this version of the hack font uh, is, is not patched. So it does not contain those uh, special characters. What you actually uh, need to do is to download the nerd fonts uh, version of the hack font that will contain all the uh, special characters that are used uh, by uh, by those extensions. So uh, I chose all the Windows compatible versions of the hack font, and yeah, and you need to extract them to your fonts. Yep, and after that, you will see that the new font uh, appeared. It's called the Hack NF, and that is the one that we should use uh, with the uh, with the Posh Kit. Yeah, so now you can see all the icons are uh, visible and working. So uh, also, I changed that in the Visual Studio Code, but Sometimes you need to restart it to just uh, make it work. And yes, now it should be, now it should be working. Yeah. And also here you can see that it's, it's actually fine. Uh, so now uh, we'll proceed to actually uh, installing the, uh, not this one, I, uh, yeah, so uh, let's go back a bit. Uh, so yeah, so here is a great project that is called the pyenv-win. And it's a uh, pyenv for Windows. And if you worked with the pyenv, you know that it's uh, 
nice tool to actually uh, manage your Python versions and uh, and it makes it a lot of a lot easier. But uh, PyEnv is for Linux, and here uh, someone uh, took a responsibility to create actually the Windows version of it, and it it works great. It it's uh, it's nice as uh, because uh, to remind you, I still uh, the, do not have uh, any Python installed. So uh, with the PyEnv, uh, actually, is all I need uh, on my PC to to work with Python. So here, I just uh, yeah uh, need to uh, clean up the the, the the other project. I uh, I actually. Uh, mistake the pi nth with the pi nth win so you must be also <laughs> that uh, those two are uh, in the name quite similar so uh, what i do now is just cloning the uh, the project uh, to my home directory uh, as you can see it's 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 there uh, now i'm adding the environment variables so that my shell will actually know where to look for uh, Pi env commands, and uh, also where to find the uh, Python uh, executables that will be downloaded by the Pi env. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, uh, I still do not have any any Python version installed on this computer, so there is no uh, Python command available. And you will see in a moment that with the Pi env. Uh, uh, it's all you need to to actually do. Uh, you do not have to install the Python separately. You can you can just use the Py and um, yeah. Sometimes you need to again restart the the terminal. Okay, so as the Py env is now installed. Uh, it's good to do the rehash as it will uh, rehash the database that it's using internally. Uh, so it will it will get all the uh, information about the installed Python versions and stuff. As we have not yet installed anything, then of course it will not uh, have anything in it. So, but yeah, as you can see uh, here, you have a list of Python versions that are available to uh, be installed it, and it's just, as easy as typing in pyenv install, and it will handle all uh, all the job for you. As you can see, uh, the Python is actually being uh, downloaded from the uh, python.org site, so it's safe, and uh, it's being downloaded to the uh, home directory that serves the purpose of a cache. So uh, yeah. And then, of course, it's uh, installing that Python, but you do not have to actually do anything. So uh, it will just do, do that automatically. OK, and when it's, when it's done, you will see, uh, yeah, this is the problem that I had. Uh, because uh, I don't know why my, uh, my settings uh, for the Python uh, alias was being set to the Microsoft Store, but uh, yeah, you can you can turn that off by uh, just a second. I think uh, oh yeah, uh, just uh, one note uh, when you uh, when you're installing a new Python, uh, it's it's available to use. By, uh, when using the pyenv, I will show you in a second that uh, you can then set the local versions uh, of the Python for each project. So it will create inside the directory a file uh, .python version, and it will store there the actually uh, the specified version that should be used uh, when entering this uh, this directory. So. But first, let me maybe try to find the. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I missed that. Uh, because 
I think, uh, yeah, here, uh, don't know why, but uh, actually when you install the app installer, it also uh, aliases the Python that exe to, to the app installer. So you have to turn it off to actually make that work. So, yeah. And now when I turn that off, uh, and of course you need to, restart the terminal, uh, but then it will, I guarantee, I guarantee that it will, it will work. So, uh, yeah. So as we've entered our, uh, project directory, we can, uh, check the version that is being set for this, for this project and what we can actually do. Uh, you can see that the, the here the version of the python is is correct one and we can create the virtual environment for this project so uh, we are now leveraging two different tools so first we use the pyenv to create the uh, python the the correct version of the python interpreter to be used and then we are using the environment, uh, the virtual environment, uh, the virtual uh, Python environment to actually install, for example, the modules for this project. So as you can see here, the pip uh, is targeting the uh, .vnv folder for the uh, storage of the packages that it will use. So uh, it will be all clean, you do not have to have uh, like multiple uh, Pythons installed on your on your system. You do not have to actually have any external uh, at Conda or something like that. The, the managers of the Python you just need to use. Uh, you, you can just use the pyenv, and uh, then you can use the module that is built in the new a newer version of Python that is called the VNV uh, and if. And if you're working with the, for example, Python 2.7, uh, you may uh, need to install the virtual environment module using pip. So, but yeah, but that's, uh, I think it's out of scope as the uh, old Python, the version two is being deprecated. So yeah, in version 3.5, I believe upwards, it will, it will be available by just uh, as a module. So. Uh, yeah, and uh, also I wanted to show uh, how to actually add the, for example, node to our project as, uh, because uh, sometimes when you're working on kind of on some kind of project, you not only have to use Python, but for example, for, for, for the front end, you need to use, for example, frameworks like Angular or React, and it's also handy uh, that you can actually use the script that is called the node env uh, to also manage your uh, nodes version. So, because uh, as for now, I believe there's no um, easy uh, way of actually installing multiple version of node on your PC. So, if you, for example, uh, have to work with with the version uh, I don't know, eight or something like that, and you want to install the version 15, then you have to actually uninstall the, the other one. So they cannot uh, like exist on the on one system at once. So uh, node env uh, is, a node, is a Python module actually. So as you can see, I leverage the uh, virtual environment to install this package. So, uh, that way, I do not actually need to install anything more on my PC. So uh, then I have the node env command available. And by using minus p, it will automatically uh, grab the uh, latest version of node and it will uh, store it uh, because it's uh, the node env script is actually kind of a tightly coupled with the virtual environment that you're working now. 
that that's that's being activated. So uh, it will it will install the uh, uh, node that uh, just a second. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 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 yeah. Uh, just uh, maybe uh, I will show you now uh, how it looks. Uh, From here, yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is this is actually this uh, environment, this development environment that I uh, that I have. I see that I still have like eight minutes, so I'll be not actually able to show you guys uh, how to uh, how to work with the with the remote extension, for example, uh, for for the. Uh, Oh, Docker is not running with the containers inside of containers, but uh, with with all that you can uh, with the, the extensions that we before installed, you can do that. I don't know, maybe maybe next time. But uh, now I think maybe there are some questions that I can answer so quickly. Maybe uh, you can ask me anything. So 